He was the epitome of a warrior in boxing, a fighter to the bone. He embodied in the ring the best that boxing is attractive to fans. But all good things come to an end. Today we will talk about the fight that finally buried the legendary Evander Holyfield's career and reveal all the details of the famous fight against James Tony. Holyfield gained national attention on July 12, 1986, when he outboxed Dwight Muhammad Kawi in an action-filled 15-round bout to capture the WBA Super Cruiserweight title. For years later, Holyfield knocked out James Buster Douglas and became the undisputed heavyweight champion of the world. These historic triumphs were followed by a win over Riddick Bowe in 1993 and two wins over Mike Tyson. During his career, Holyfield defeated Mike Tyson, Riddick Bowe, James Douglas, George Foreman, Larry Holmes, Michael Moorer, Pink Lawn Thomas, Michael Dokes, John Ruiz, and Franz Botard. These 11 boxers have at one time or another held the world heavyweight title. But as he prepared to fight James Tony, the best part of Holyfield's career was far behind him. In the previous five years, he had only won twice in seven bouts, and he had not won by knockout since 1997. But talk doesn't win fights. And the Holyfield camp was confident in its fighter. Although Tony was six years younger than Evander, Holyfield's team believed that he was the better fighter, who hit harder and could control Tony with his jab. What's more, Holyfield has been beaten many times by fighters more powerful than Tony. James has never been beaten as hard as Evander. However, if you look at the situation realistically, Holyfield entered the fight against Tony as a gatekeeper. In case of victory, he again became a contender. If he lost, James became a contender, and Evander was demoted to the status of opponent. Holyfield and Tony looked great in recent pre-match events. Evander weighed in at 219 pounds and appeared to be in the best shape a 41-year-old fighter could be in. Tony, at 217 pounds, came into the fight a little heavy. And now it's time for the fight. The confrontation between Holyfield and Tony was a sad sight for people who care about Evander. This fight was a real test for Evander and he failed. Holyfield started the fight well and looked good at the start. But it was difficult to hit Tony accurately and cleanly. Whether it's back, as he discovered already, the answer to the fighter. But the way you beat him is you do throw his work to do and he's doing it here in this round. Not only is it good for Holyfield, but as you saw in his last fight, against Chris for measuring a lot of moments in that last round actually and you're not supposed to be able to hook with the left hook and we enter round three scheduled for 12 a heavy win and so far that the left hand seems okay finally in the third round Evander hit James with his best right hand and nothing happened early in the round James Holyfield is able to do something you seldom can do against Tony Land a good right hand, but you see how well Tony slips these punches. Excellent right by James. And later on in the round, dare I say that Holyfield told us, I'm not saying it's dazzling at this point, but it's certainly better than Then in the fourth round, Tony hit Holyfield hard in return and Evander staggered. After that, the fight became one-sided. Stand on his 
right side and can't land any punches. Now he gives the left. An incredible look of concern on his face. And at a certain point, and you saw the reaction. It's been all James Tomlin. He is just lost to Holyfield's body. Has to be wearing the whole exhaustion. Oh, what a right hand by Tony. It's pretty, pretty interesting. Now he's going backwards out of frustration, going back to the head buddy. By the seventh round, Tony was hitting Evander at will. Holyfield has been in this situation in the past. He was once a young fighter who fought aging lions like George Foreman and Larry Holmes. And, of course, there were times when Evander was beaten up and came back to take over. But not at this time. Not enough punches coming from Evander to become undisputed champion once again. You have to wonder about, about that after this performance. And aficionado that even he lost to the by the eighth round, Holyfield's face was swollen and blood was flowing from his mouth. He reveres Marciano because he was a small head since 1997. Tony has a performed well, which usually is the power you do have. Blood from the, uh, the... Again, nothing. Comes back with a couple of soft left hands. And again, struts back to his corner. Moment there in the corner, Don Turner urging. Moments I remember in a boxing corner in a long time. You continue to get hit by these guys. In the ninth round, a flurry of blows, culminating in a powerful blow to the body, forced him to stretch out on the canvas. Most likely, referee Jay Nady would have let the fight go on. After all, Evander was the ultimate warrior boxer. But when Holyfield stood up, Don Turner entered the ring, forcing the referee to stop the fight. It was the second time in his career that he was knocked out. It was one of the best decisions of Turner's career. At the time the fight was stopped, Tony was leading on the cards of all three judges. After the fight, a press conference was held where the press gave Evander a standing ovation. It was a good moment for Holyfield to end his career as a fighter, but he didn't. Over the next eight years, he fought 10 more times. But those fights went without Don Turner in his corner. They had 16 fights together, including fights against Mike Tyson, Riddick Bowe, and Lennox Lewis. Since 1994, Turner has prepared Evander for fights and covered his back as soon as the fight began. No more need for his services. Tony was nimble and hard to hit. So, I tried to lure him into a trap. But Don did not understand this and did not believe in me as a fighter, so he stopped the fight. My coach should not be someone who doesn't believe in me. But Turner thought otherwise. Evander only hears what he wants to hear. And if you don't tell him what he wants to hear, you'll leave. I look at things realistically, and the reality is that Evander is no longer who he used to be. I told him this and they fired me but I'd rather lose my job than go to a funeral.